Are you ready? WebRadio.com, your internet radio destination for the new millennium. Live anytime, on any day, from anywhere. It's WebRadio.com. Nothing can compare to what's happening across the network. So come listen to this station live at WebRadio.com with music, news, sports, whatever your taste is. It's there. there. Web Radio also has some cool giveaways all the time. Be sure to check it out. WebRadio.com. WebRadio.com. KZLAFM.com, Bocha Logo Show. Uh, good evening to you. There we go. We're all plugged in. Now our guest tonight is Michael Wayne James. He's already here in the house. Yes. 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 We're here. Yeah. We've been hard at it already while well, you've been getting ready yourselves, setting your dial to this uh, program. And to begin the show, I want to play for you one of the, uh, one of the trailers or one of the reels I have of Michael Wayne James, very fine effort given here. Um, looking for lines, Michael? Yes, looking for lines. Yeah, looking for, looking for lines. Yeah, I'm going to play that right now. I'm going to play a scene from that. I like checking out his reels. I like this one. I picked this one out. So uh, here it is. My brother Kevin was diagnosed with an enlarged heart and placed on a transplant list. After that, I had him move in with me so I could watch over him and care for him. One afternoon, his chest gave him a tremendous amount of pain, and we decided to go to the emergency room. And upon arrival, there had been a multi-car accident on the freeway, and the entire trauma center was full. With my brother's impatience, he decided to leave after several hours. We went home that night, and. Uh, we were preparing to go fishing the next day on his birthday. We got our poles ready and lunch is packed. I went in that morning to wake him and he had passed on. And it's hard. We were very close. I'm so sorry, Mike. Thank you for sharing. You know, I've been waiting to play this. You know who that is. Veronica Sixtos, our guest a few weeks back. Mike, this is a uh, guest that we had uh, a few weeks ago. She's a singer, saxophone, an actress, songwriter. Love her music. I'll be playing it throughout the show. We will be back with more after these commercials. Pay our bills. Pocho Loco Show. Back with more. Standing of a right and wrong Tell me all the things you dreamt of What you'd become At any point did you lose faith in God? So I'm sitting and clicking, and bang, gorgeous, hot, and sexy models like you've never seen. Yeah? I'm telling you, what a website. I start ordering right online, and then my engine was... My friend John and I think the road rules. We've got lots of ideas on where to go. Unfortunately, we're a little low on bucks. I'm thinking we're going nowhere fast. Then John found out... LendingTree.com is turning the tables on the loan process. Now, rather than going from bank to bank in search of the best deal you can have over 100 banks and lenders actually competing for your business. Another great place to... It started out 
like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of myself and tell the other women in my life to do the same. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives so of the women you love. So I'm sitting and clicking. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. For all of your auto repairs, including expert collision work, LA Radiator on Santa Monica Boulevard is the place to go. Located just a few steps east of Vine, LA Radiator offers the fastest service at the lowest cost available anywhere in the area. Whether it's just a tune-up or a major repair, you'll be putting your car in the best hands possible. Don't let the name LA Radiator fool you. They do a lot more than just radiators. Remember, the next time your car needs any repair, try LA Radiator at 6216 Santa Monica Boulevard, located just a few steps east of Vine Street in Hollywood. So I'm sitting and clicking, and bang, just a gorgeous, hot, and sexy models like you've never seen. Yeah? I'm telling you, what a website. I start ordering right online, and then my engine was... My friend John and I... Oh, well, 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 there you go, folks. You you heard what went on there. Commercials. Michael Michael's busy at work getting ready for this show. He has to hear all the uh, problems I got when it comes to commercials. Well, I, you know that's that's not on me. That's what happens in radio. But uh, yeah, the commercials that wouldn't work last week went smoothly, and then the ones that come from the deck, Leo. That's our engineer. They're skipping all over the place. So I don't, I don't know what's up. I think Trump I don't know. would say, fire the engineer. Uh, oh, no. He has been, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's not working. <laughs> Man. Uh, now, uh, no, it was last week. And now, now Leo, now the production deck is not working. Or something. It's just, it's just skipping like crazy. I don't understand this. It's technical. We have no control. Yeah. That's Veronica Sixtos. That was her one... Um, uh, uh, song on the five uh, song disc in Spanish and uh, anyway yeah but uh, it's all right Michael we've gone we've gone through worse on this anyway uh, back at it back at it at uh, least you, the ground's not shaking beneath uh, our feet yeah let, let me raise your mic up yeah now, running for the exit now how do you want to be addressed is Michael or Mike or what Michael Michael be great Michael okay yeah and uh, I'm telling you the I don't know how it is with, with you folks who are in showbiz, but everybody that comes in here, I think most of the time, they look so much better than their pictures. And you're, Mike, I mean, he looks even better than his pictures that I have found on the Internet. Thank you, Pojo. Yeah, he really does. I, I kid you not. Well, I uh, have weight gain and uh, weight loss, and I work out, depending on the roles, I uh, that, put no, on the weight true. or take it off. That, that's Throw true. my facial, shave it off. And then the Esquire and those rag magazines uh, at the uh, counters when you're checking out from your grocery store, they always put the worst pictures up of celebrities. I remember when Schwarzenegger was our pre- our, our, our uh, governor that <laughs> they had one, one of these magazines and he was, of course, all out of shape and everything. Because, you know, a lot of these actors, they go on vacation. And so they throw away the diet and they just want to indulge. And they have as a, a, a byline there... Underneath Schwarzenegger's picture, that he's he's, he's putting on, he's going to have a heart attack. He's on he's on his way to death, <laughs> just because he's a little bit pudgy, overweight. But I mean, you know, that's that's how they make their money. But uh, yeah, next time you you see actors in magazines or on the news, and they don't look themselves or out of shape, it could be that they're probably on vacation. Just look at the background; they're always by an ocean somewhere. They could be. 
Yeah. Actually, I had an opportunity to be in a magazine, a Shape magazine, back earlier in my really? career. Shape. Uh, I was demonstrating holiday gifts and uh, athletic uh, equipment, and uh-huh. Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the same article, uh, same magazine publication that uh, that month. Oh, yeah, and uh, I, I I hope your picture was uh, uh, flattering and not the opposite. You know, they had you it wasn't good. bad. Uh, they had me in a grabbing machine. I was hanging upside down. It was looking a little funny. Yeah. You you look like you're in good shape now. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm working out about nice. five, six, seven days a week. Yeah. Well, it's, it's well I'm in training. I've seven. got <laughs> up to seven days easy, a week. Man, easy. Uh, <laughs> there's a uh, film written by Javier Barbera and um, it is uh, The Dragon's Triangle and he offered me the, the lead. Yes, Dragon's Triangle. And he's offered me the starring role of George in this uh, very uh, written on true facts uh-huh. of an area off the coast of Japan, Philippines, and Guam where hundreds of years of documentation of occurrences of uh, anomalies. There's been ships that have disappeared, ghost ships, uh, 100-foot oh. waves. It's the polar opposite of the Bermuda Triangle. And, and what, is it a true story? Is it fictitious? It's based or? on facts. Okay. And then it has been uh, elaborated. You, you're going to no, you, you're gonna get an audience for that. There's still a lot of people out there that are, um, that, um, are big fans of that stuff. Big, big fans of that. I want to turn off my... You know, I keep forgetting in this in this studio before I come on. Yeah, yeah. Turn, my, turn my phone off. And then we got people, especially this co-host that's supposed to be here. He keeps texting me, Augie. And uh, I forget to shut the doggone thing off. You know, I'm just going to leave it at home. But then again, you know, <laughs> when they get to the studio, hey, Pocho, let me in. Um, I, I heard that. Yes, at t is calling. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, you're going to get a, there's always a big audience. There, there's what I, I uh, and other, you know, filmmakers will call a built-in audience who are into ufologists, to UFO, that kind of thing, anomalies. And, um, yeah, and I, uh, that's one thing I noticed about you, Mike. Michael. Michael, let's get you that got straight. Michael. Michael's good. See him on the street. I used to be Michael. called Mikey. Michael, and you, you said you sometimes get down to the LBC. Next time I see you, I'll say, Michael, Michael. Anyway, uh, we can say yeah. hello to Martin Geeky down there at Thunder Studios. Thunder, St- where is that located? That's uh, located in Long Beach. Where, where uh, Long Beach? Thunder. I don't know the exact address. It's a uh, new studio, and they were shooting on a green screen. His new uh, feature, which is currently filming uh, 9/11, Martin Geeky is directing mm-hmm. it with Sunset Pictures. Uh, he has in there Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Charlie Sheen, Luis yeah. Guzman. That, all three of them. But Luis, now he has a TV show, right? Uh, he's, I saw him on um, Narcos. Narcos, okay. Unless he's been shot off yet. I haven't watched all the shows. <laughs> no, he, I think he's going to... I'm not a TV guy, so I, otherwise I would t- I'd give you the name off the tip of my tongue. But you people know out there in the Hispanic community, Luis Guzman. And, uh, but, I, but, you know, they, I, I understand they do TV and they can do films on the side at the same time. But uh, that's good. That's, I mean, that's... A, that's a uh, good uh, list of actors you got uh, for that project. I tell you that much. But um, yeah, yeah the one thing I noticed about your IMDb, IMDb is that uh, uh, in, in researching was that you get a lot of uh, leads and also you do a lot of supporting roles. This this film here that the clip I took from Looking for Lions. That yes. Was, now was that a lead or was that a supporting role? That was a uh, supporting cameo role, and I was working with uh, Bradley Raglan on the project. And when we got down, this is about the black market organ transplants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we sat down, and he said, I really would like you to tell your story, but with in the direction that our storyline is going. So I talked about my brother who had passed away uh, of a heart attack. And I made it fit into the storyline. So mm-hmm. everything that I spoke of was true, except he was not on an organ transplant list. Right. And I found that organic place to go to. And uh, as now, it was very touching. Yeah. yeah you, you seem to be a little bit uh, taken right now. But, uh, yeah, and that's that's what, uh, I mean, you... you 
you, li- you listeners, you should listen or you should check out on YouTube uh, that reel right there, that that uh, scene. It's very well done. Very well done. Um, but you know, when uh, actually I like to bring a point there that is that um, uh, a gentleman looked at the film and uh, James Fargo, and he's doing a film called Beneath the Shadow. It's the story of the flying tigers. And oh. after seeing that, uh-huh. um, we've been in touch through the years. He offered me a role in the film. He said, we have a lot of roles, Michael, and I'd really like you to be a part of this project. And for those of you who do not know James Fargo, he directed seven Clint Eastwood films when Clint Eastwood had his stock company. And he, he, he's done so many films. <laughs> I, I believe you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, uh, let me go back to, a little bit to the beginning. Now, because when, when people heard that I had Michael Wayne James on, you knew what was going to come next, right? Uh, people were going, were, were asking me, well, is he related to the Duke? Is he related to Duke? I said, I don't know, but you know what? I'll ask him. <laughs> I will ask him. You know? So, for um, on behalf of those crazy listeners, Michael. Yes. Are you related to the Duke in any way? Well, I'm not related <laughs> to the Duke. There you go. <laughs> but I've actually uh, have been told that I look resemble him at a at a younger age uh, with John Wayne, and I uh, was actually asked to uh, impersonate John Wayne at special events. I turned down the offer at that time. I I, I was I'd show up at different um, events just wearing my 1880s wardrobe, and some one day somebody said, "The Duke." Mm, yeah, and that was just, um, and I have a face like that, and uh, Ethan uh, loved it down at the uh, John Wayne uh, Cancer Foundation, did a benefit at the Balboa Bay Club, and I was guest of uh, Catherine Emmy, and they said, come in 1880s wardrobe, and I was about the only cowboy down there, <laughs> but I had a great time, the chili was good. That first in line for the chili, though. <laughs> I w- and good chili and cornbread. You gotta, that, gotta that was down in Balboa, huh? Balboa Bay Club, yes. Now, do they have that every year down there, that uh, event? I don't know if it's sponsored every year at that location. Mm-hmm. I've now, you know, been partly raised in, in Orange County. My dad used to drag us down there. and uh, My brother, he was, my brother was John Wayne. I was Clint Eastwood, see. So uh, it, was a, it was a throw for my brother because my father pointed out John Wayne's house at the time, and he was still living there in Balboa. Gorgeous house out there on the island. Balboa is an island, for those of you who do not know, who are not true Southern Californians, Balboa is like an island just a little bit away from Newport Beach, right across the bay there. Because, you know, uh, Michael, uh, there are people in Southern California that still have not even visited or even know where Catalina Island is. That's alone, a great place to be. Yeah, let alone Balboa. But, uh, uh you know, the thing is, looking at your pictures on the Internet and seeing you that picture with Ethan Wayne, and then I started going back, looking around, and then I found a Michael Wayne. I didn't know that uh, uh, John Wayne also had a son named Michael. Michael Wayne. Michael yes. Wayne. I know I knew Patrick, all right, and Ethan, but uh, 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 Michael Wayne, I didn't know, and that he passed away. And then I was looking at your picture. I said, well, maybe it's a son, because you look a lot, I mean, you look, I don't know, in true, in real life, if he was alive today, if you were standing together, you look like Ethan's brother, <laughs> to me right now, but I don't, but, but to me on the internet, those pictures, I said, yeah, there, there, there is a family resemblance, that's crazy, but now you, you were raised in Michigan, or you were born in Michigan, were you raised there? In born in Flint, Michigan, and uh, came here in, uh, when I was five, my father had, uh, it shut down uh, General <laughs> General Motors. They shut it down and oh, a layoff. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he came out here to California, and he loved it. And the whole family then followed. And uh, it was a road uh, cross country road trip with my mother and my younger bro- three younger brothers at that time. So we came out here, and I've really been raised here in Southern California uh, my entire so, life. So how old were you when you made the trip out west? I was uh, five. Oh yeah. When we came out to California, and April first will be my birthday. About April b- birthday's coming up. Yeah, right around oh. the corner. I love Carrot Key, by the way. There you go, folks. 
<laughs> and a good pineapple F- upside down agent, cake. You find anything online, how to contact Michael. He'll tell you later on. Uh, yeah. I like carrot cake, too. Good for the digestive system. But uh, now, so so what area did you grow up in here in Southern California? In the valley or? Uh, San Fernando Palo? Valley was the original yeah, uh, in the Panorama City area is where we first landed and uh, spent time throughout the San Fernando Valley and then down to the coast, also within mm-hmm. Santa Monica, Venice. I've lived in a number of places, Pacific Palisades. Uh, Long Beach was one of my residents at that yeah, time. You told me you lived not too far from where I stayed for a while. Yeah. Then back uh, to uh, Pasadena and um, Sierra Madre, well, I'll, Desert I'll Hot Springs. Home. Desert Hot Springs? Woo. Woodland Hills. <laughs> Selmar. Man. La Crescenta. I thought my father moved us around. Now, you be careful. I don't know about you, but looking back, I used to think, man, my brother, my father moved us around so much. I think he was ADD or something like ADD. that. Yeah, he, he, well, I think it was just life just, and uh, the family. I think it went to about 12 yeah. uh, elementary schools, the high schools, and there three high schools. Yeah, but that, that, that was pretty common with even, you know, with families back then where we moved around uh here to there but man you you were raised up all over see you filled in a gap there michael because when i was reading the bio and and i really didn't get a whole lot out of uh, imdb on that uh, there wasn't much there yeah there wasn't much there but that's good that's good that's good sometimes because see then it gives me space to not even fake that oh i already know where this guy's from ah so that's why i'm asking myself okay how does this guy get from uh, uh, the Midwest, basically, you know, Midwest, uh, Michigan. How does he get from this point? He comes out here. All of a sudden, he wants to do acting. He's out here. See, I don't know. I didn't know. Of course, you you Maybe moved out here when you were five. Yeah. I says, what? What, what is this? <laughs> so, yeah. And so he tells me this, and see, there you go. The gap is filled. So, how did you get into acting? I was in a homeroom class in uh, junior high school, Avista Junior High, and my homeroom uh, teacher. Mm-hmm was talking about James Coburn yeah. and there was a relationship there as, uh, as either uh, she was the wife or a friend or part of the family and I got excited so I went down and I took a Shakespeare class oh. and that was quite interesting <laughs> oh yes it was quite interesting and uh, so I started doing summer, summer stock and sonnets and um, working in that area and then I got out of high school and I started uh, doing some of the uh, comedy and the improv mm-hmm. left it Got to college down in Santa Monica College. Love that place. What's that? Santa Monica okay. College. Oh, Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I've had some important studies to teach. I've had some students that, that have gone to Santa Monica <laughs> College. Uh huh. It was nice. My hair was down to my shoulders, 155 pounds. Uh-oh. And um, I was an athlete. I'd been swimming for uh, a number of years now. Mm. And one of the women I was uh, dating, uh, her, uh, where she was living, was a photographer, Victoria Graham. She said, you know, Michael, we should do some uh, sports photography here, modeling. You know, you got a great shape, and I looked like an all-American um, surfer guy, just strong, athletic, and healthy. So we started doing print work, and then somebody said, you should do commercials, and they introduced me to Beverly Hecht Agency. Mm. They said, go talk to Beverly, man. you got a great look, and you're healthy, all-American, and I said, I'll give it a try. So I went over and met with Beverly Hecht, and... Uh, that day and uh, she sent me out on an audition and I left and I had a pager at this time that's how long ago <laughs> this was <laughs> a pager. so um, I left and on the way home it went off I looked they don't have a phone with the pager you know so I got mm-hmm. home made a phone call I booked it and it was for Laganacea German ice cream and I was a lifeguard that's so awful. I'd been swimming and playing water polo mm-hmm. I was exactly what they wanted and I was filming on Zuma Beach in Malibu. Lucky you. 80-some degrees yeah. in the water, and I said, I like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that pretty much the, the start of it, and continued uh, further modeling and uh, uh, doing commercial work, and got in with Neiman Marcus uh, for the in-house oh. in Beverly Hills, working with George All Romani right. and Bill Blass Outerwear, and then started moving into uh, background work. I said, you don't want to get out here and see what's going on, and I loved it. Hmm. So I started learning on the set. So it wasn't a traditional training, uh, collegiate. No, no. Well, actually, that's the best training, in my opinion. I mean, if you have natural acting ability, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, you have to. You don't have to pay all those fees for the acting school, but you have to have ability, folks. 
And so go on. And then you're on the set. You're learning. I'm learning, and I worked in with a, on a lot of sets through the years. Uh, remember there was uh, Sylvester Stallone on one of his films. Had Randy Quaid. I think it was LBJ. Dabney mm. Coleman on his series, The Monkeys. I mean, he goes on and on. There's the so monkeys. many that went on. There was feature how, films. How I'm going to catch you here with this one before we go into a break. <laughs> how in the world did you land up on uh, General Hospital? Every, you know, we, you're another oh, person. Oh, on General on Hospital. General, General Hospital. I had been on the show a couple of times um, as a police officer, and I stayed in touch with casting. And one day I got a call from Lisa Snydecker, who was an associate with uh, Mark Teschner. He said, Michael, um, I could come down on Tuesday. I said, okay, great. Um, so you're going to, uh, when do you want me to pick up the sides? And um, he said, no, you got a roll. And I was <laughs> amazed because I've always had to audition. So it was uh -huh. offered to me. And um, I was working with uh, Christopher Lucci. He was uh, played Leopold Taub. Finished off the scene, and uh, Mark and Lisa came down after, and he said, Michael, that was a great job. Are you available Thursday? I said, yes. Holy. <laughs> and I was written into the uh, storyline. It was the cartel storyline. And Albert Tony worked with uh, Tony Geary, John Riley, uh, Fanola. And it's nice. And, and Tony Geary was so kind to me. We sat in his room and uh, we shared stories. And he talked about honing in and, and finding that place uh, to bring your character to life. And then I was arrested off the storyline. Arrested off. I was arrested on the show <laughs> in the storyline. Right. They busted me when I went to kill one of the guys in the hospital. So, Did you ever meet an actress by the name of Lily Melgar? Uh, she was uh, with, uh, what's his name? She had the part with uh, the Puerto Rican singer. Um, what's his name? Well, obviously, from your look, you never met her, I guess. But no, she, it doesn't she, she cross my a, mind. She had a primary role, I think. Now, what year was that, that you were doing? Um, oh, Ricky Martin. She was the one who was doing the part with Ricky Martin in General Hospital. But year, what year was that you were doing General Hospital? Uh, so I believe 1990, 91. Okay, she came after you, I believe. Yeah, she. so you wouldn't have seen her. Yeah, yeah but she was, she was on General Hospital as well. And I guess my point is that, man, there's two... Uh, uh, two actors that we've had on the show well Lily didn't actually come on because she had to reschedule uh, that have been on General Hospital and so you, you did a lot for me right there with uh, that description well they also run on on different storylines at the same time oh. So, oh, so you're not you might not run into she her. may have been on the yeah. the same show but in a different storyline I see I within see. the show yeah on, at a different time, but uh, a different time uh, and place. And, and, and this is what, and I'm glad that you you took time to uh, describe all that and how you got into it and, and and doing the part and then being written off because this is what the show is all about. Uh, one of the objectives I try to choose is that people that listen in will uh, who are trying to break into the industry they hear these other actors and their experiences and. And what they've gone through, and they, they get kind of an idea of what it's all about. And I have said before on this air, and this will be the last comment before I break, um, that um, if, and I think when Mel Novak was here, he has a story similar to you, um, that if you are reliable, you're dependable, know your lines, they will call you back. Yes. Is somebody will. right out, outside the studio talking? Yes, they'll call you back and someone's out there. No, how? Uh, this is not soundproof. How the heck? Is, is the door closed? Door's closed, but I think she's uh, she vocally has a very <laughs> loud voice. What is that? You know, I'm trying to be Mr. Serious. I've got people talking outside my window. What is that? <laughs> ah, okay, we're going to break for commercial. We're going to take a break. And so help me, and Veronica, Veronica Sixtos is going to benefit by this if this machine, okay, I, I, we're not allowed to bet in here, but, uh, you know, if we were, I'd, I'd bet Michael right now this machine's not going to work. Leo, I'm going to attempt. I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. And, and, and for you people out there. <laughs> Better odds. You, you get to bet along with this. Uh, 
let, 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 let's see what's going on with the commercial. But before I break, you know, this is um, Veron- I'm gonna play Veronica's um, uh, Libelula. Libelula. This was her her Spanish uh, song off the album Chapters. And when she introduced this, not a lot of people knew how to say Firefly in Spanish. I still don't know. Uh, Libelula. Libelula. Soy pocho. I'm going to play it anyway, but it's a pretty song. It's her only Spanish track. And I'm playing it from the beginning. And so help me. These commercials do not take. Okay, I'm going to come back to this and you're going to get to hear even more of it. So, Veronica, especially if you're listening, you're going to get the benefit from this. Here we go. Back with more. Yes, yes. Come on now. <laughs> we all know you can do it, Pocho. Come on. It's not me. You're, wa- you're watching it from right now. Look at this. I'm seeing all numbers, right. but I'm not hearing anything. Ah, there it is. Oh, yeah, I recognize that. That's, that's Veronica's sweet guitar. Love the guitar. You didn't have to bring any tequila with you, did you, uh... My well God. there, partner. <laughs> yeah. Put in your coffee. I'm driving, oh. not riding a horse. Teníamos una conexión de nuestras almas enamorado. Me llamaba Libélula, Libélula. I'm sitting and clicking, and bang, gorgeous, hot, and sexy models like you've never seen. Yeah? I'm telling you, what a website. I start ordering right online, and then my engine was... My friend John and I think the road rules. We've got lots of ideas on where to go. Unfortunately, we're a little low on bucks. I'm thinking we're going nowhere fast. Then John found out... LendingTree.com is turning the tables on the loan process. Now, rather than going from bank to bank in search of the best deal, you you can have over 100 banks and lenders actually competing for your... All right. Another great place to use Visa. You, you see what? I got a witness. Jiggle. I got Michael they right here. They they are you witnessing? They yes, I'm, I'm witnessing. Wondrous things. things. Not touching a thing. And that's just jumping. The, this is an anomaly right here. All right, you know what? All right. Go ahead, Veronica. Take it. Take it, baby. That, that, that's it. Me dejó el borrido y la cascara. No sabía que me iba a caer sola. Me dejó el borrido y la cascara. No sabía que Same two worlds, but he loves you till the end. 
end of time forever and ever and never denied he is undeniably irrevocably eternally in love and for a moment i forgot this was fiction just a figment of a woman's imagination it's not right she's got me fantasizing about a non-existent not to mention non-human Bojo your logo show. Well, I hope that was entertaining for you. If any of you ever seek a radio position, make sure that this this make sure this does not happen to you. And you know, Michael. Yes. I I, I took this disc home and I recorded it. And you notice I played these other two commercials that came out all right on cassette, and they came out fine. So I figured, oh, I'm gonna do a good show because. Uh, I got these commercials straightened out, and they 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 came out fine. And now it's the doggone regular commercials that are on the Blitz. So I you know I can't win. I I can't win. Yeah. What is it? Sometimes that's kind of thing happens. Yeah. I tell you what. Yeah. Let's see where are we at now with our interview with Mike. Oh, well, we were it. talking about uh, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, beginning. Now I want to get into it. Now you filled in a lot of gaps there. Yeah, I'll fill another uh, little yeah, gap. No, no, for no, you. Wait, 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 before you do that, let me ask this one thing. Was uh, when you when you did General Hospital? Yes. How long have you been acting until you got that role? I started in my twenties, and actually doing uh, student films, short films, mm-hmm. uh, back in nineteen uh, seven, late seventies. And um, then moved into the uh, commercial print, commercials, had a spot on uh, Cagney and Lacey. Yeah, Cagney and Lacey. Yes, that's when I got my union card. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) In the 90s. Uh, Superior Court, it's Ben Ames, insurance investigator. I'm the guy that brought in the person who they thought was dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were going to convict somebody. So um, I started at that time, and then I started doing, a bit prior to that, I was doing a lot of non-union background work. Mm-hmm. And I was working so much, I had to turn down work, and it was $35 a day. <laughs> Great breakfast, breakfast burritos, I love those, you know, and, and, <laughs> and uh, then the great lunches. But there's a lot to say about being there and watching. Learn and, by watching. Yeah, yeah and, and paying very close attention. It's, it's a master's course. It really came to a nice uh, a graduation when I had a chance to stand in for Michael Caine on Surrender with oh. Sally Field and Peter Boyle. Mm. I was on that for the duration actors, of the feature yeah. film. Yes. And just to be there and to watch. And my job was to definitely watch and then help with lighting, uh, with, our, with our director of photography. So I was watching every movement. Mm-hmm. And I just absorbed it all. Yes, see, well, you're what we call a visual learner. Yes, I'm a visual learner. Yeah, go ahead. And so, so when you hit that spot in General Hospital, I was just curious how long you had been acting. Was it ten years already? It'd been a number of years. I can't. On 1970s. Uh, oh wow! Uh, yeah, 19, 1970s is when I started. And I'm trying so to find so out it was about some... 20, it would have been about 20 years? Uh, 70, say it was in my 20s. Well, you've been hacking a long time already. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. Well, well uh, uh... I've been yeah, off and on in between but, yeah. uh, different careers and, uh, you know, filling in the gaps when you're not booking, mm-hmm. then you're finding something else to do. Or actually, people would offer me... See, you see, see Michael, this, what this is coming off to me, and I think it's a great thing, because uh, I you see, I was looking in your bio, and I'm I'm thinking, okay, wh- where does the guy study? Does he have a degree? Well, that's only the Brits that have degrees. Um, and uh, I said, wow, man, man, how did this? Was this guy just like old school? He just came onto the set. Hey, you want to be an actor? And uh, he had natural talent, and and what? But I think that's great. You don't hear too much of that today happening because all the bios I read. I read about these actors and actresses, and they've all gone to school. They've had courses. They're very well trained. They're even singing and dancing today. 
And uh, sometimes it's refreshing to hear a story like Michael's where he's just on the set learning. That's how my brother got into stunt, uh, by the way. Being a stuntman, on the set by learning. Boy, learning learning the language of the business, understanding what a director is uh, saying, mm-hmm. and understanding how to take those directions, then find that place uh, within your backstory for your character, which is where I am today with that. Uh, I'd call him a method actor. I would uh, definitely classify myself. Okay, now now you're, you're producing. You're doing more producing these days as well? Yes, I've actually... Uh, producing a number of projects. I'm working with uh, Banning Kent Larry is my producing partner. He's out of our production company is in Austin, Texas. He's based in Lexington, Kentucky. Whoa. Hi mm-hmm. Banning. If you're if you're tuning in right now. And we have a number of scripts and one of them that we have actually that's uh, in development is the only one and it's the Roy Orbison story. And Martin yeah, yes. Yeah. Um uh, you know when I read that I thought, man, he's gonna play uh, Roy Orbison as well. You know, I'm a big fan of Roy. And uh, who me? Yeah, no, then, no, no, and then, then, then yeah, that's what I thought. I said, <laughs> no, well, I don't, don't even dye, look like. They'll dye his hair. They'll tie his hair black, <laughs> and they'll put him in these uh, black ray bands. He'll look like uh, Roy. No, so uh, yeah, well, so maybe the the founder of Sun Records. He's a little more interesting. <laughs> I can probably get away with that one. Where 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 are you at with with this story then? With, this uh, with the story, the uh, script is completed. Um, uh, we have. Uh, Ben Kent Larry had uh, done a documentary on Roy's uh, family and friends over a year and a half, and from the documentary he wrote the uh, screenplay. And then I had ran into uh, my first meeting with Mark Gee at a screening of Beneath the Darkness with uh, Dennis Quaid, of which he had uh, written and directed. Mm-hmm. And his wife, uh, Delia, was with my agency, Amy Manning, down in uh, Manhattan Beach, and I was invited. Met Martin. We had a great time down there, and uh, then he had a our little after party over at the House of Blues and Mark Gee and the All-Star Band got up and played and really incredible music of some mm. rockabilly and jazz and I like that I walked over and said Martin I, I said like uh, you know I've got a script here though the only one the Roy Harrison story and he says that's a film that's got to be made you know I can't believe they, they they've made all these other films these days on singers uh, uh, Ray Charles and everyone else I am surprised because I do have Roy Orbison's, uh, uh, you know, his collection of all his songs, and they uh, and I I always thought to myself, when are they going to make a film about uh, the great Roy Orbison? Um, so <laughs> they enlisted you. Enlisted to me. Produce, um, to, to well, I'm, I'm co-producing the project. Okay. Uh, it's coming under Trade Winds International Pictures banner. Uh, with uh, Sunset Pictures, which is Mark mm-hmm. Eagy's, uh company, CEO and president. They, we're going to schedule to shoot in uh, two years, and right now we're just finalizing things with the family, with uh, Wesley, uh, Roy Jr., and Alex. Mm-hmm. And um, once we get everything all set up, we're ready to go. We've got our music rights. Uh, uh, Dennis Wemus Grubb was one of the music producers uh, that brought Roy out from a little club here in the valley i believe that was with the righteous brothers out to texas to Mm -hmm. uh, cut an album and then got him on a couple of shows and then after that they formed the traveling wilburys i like i like (laughs) their songs well i i remember them um now did that ever come to light when you were with all these people why a film had never been done as far as i know there's no film that has been produced on roy's life Did, did you ever Ask or did well, you know, I'm actually. I, I did. Why, why, why do we have a? Is that you would think? Has there a film already been done? Have they done that already, or what? The uh, film has not been done, and part of it was Roy's second wife uh, wanted to start the Roy Orbison story from her meeting, and that's with Barbara Orbison oh, from okay. then on. I see. But truly, the story begins coming up. Roy, as a young boy, coming oh, up from the Dust Bowl of yeah. Oklahoma to Texas, and why he dyed his hair dark why was he wearing these glasses how did he learn the music with his uncles on the porch yeah, that's bench? what i want to know and uh, it's a beautiful story and it's well documented and uh banning's just an incredible incredible writer and uh he did a great job in the back and forth with martin and we shortened it from uh, we were 172 pages out 
and it would have been a very lengthy film. 172. Which well, that's fine because it's on a historical, you know, figure, uh, entertainer. <laughs> These well, films invariably they come out an hour and uh, you know, two hours, two and a half hours. Go ahead. And um, there was so much to say about how the uh, um, songs came to be, and such as with "Pretty Woman," and that uh, uh-huh. great songs. Yeah. Uh, Roy had uh, gone to local burger stop, car hop, to uh, get a burger, and he's got his wife with him, and she comes over to the car hop and says, "Hi, Roy, how you doing?" And uh, he says, "Well, that'll be the u-. she said, "Well, that'll be the usual." And he says, "Yeah." And the wife looks over and says, "Roy, what's going on here?" He said, "Well." Joe and I come down here all the time to uh, to get burgers and write music and stuff, and so they have the burgers, and uh, she leaves, comes back, and they're finished, and uh, says, we'd like some dessert. So yeah, we'll take a couple ice cream cones. So she returns the ice cream cones and drops them off, and she turns around, and she winks at Roy, and then she starts to leave. The wife takes the ice cream cone and throws it out the window. Uh-oh. Hits her on the back of the hip and the upper <laughs> <laughs> slides off, and Roy says, Mercy me! <laughs> Pretty woman, won't you walk on by? Pretty woman. <laughs> so, what, man, she sounds. Uh, so, that's just one of them. Uh, Blue Bayou. There's so much intricate uh, she, she, she wasn't, parts he was, of the storyline. He wasn't married to a Hispanic, was he? Uh, no, that, that's why Hispanic not. women, they get very jealous at the sight of another <laughs> woman. I'm telling you, man. So what's going on with you right now? I mean, go ahead. You, you right now this. Currently, yeah, what's going on? Okay. No. Uh, currently, actually, tomorrow I'm working on a short film with uh, right. Charlton Thorpe, and that's my uh, fourth film with Charlton. And uh, we're doing this as, uh, I would say we're collaborating on this. Uh, we have a very close relationship as mm-hmm. uh, filmmakers. Uh, he wrote this for me. Uh that's currently going on. We're going to be filling up in the Angels Crest Forest tomorrow. It's called The Hiker. It's about a man who's looking to find himself and uh, hmm. get centered. And during his journey, he begins to hear things and questions things as he walks up the mountain. Hmm. Mysterious sounds that no one else seems to hear. Wear your shorts. It's going to be hot up there. Uh, shorts? No, I <laughs> won't be wearing shorts. Maybe a little sunscreen. Okay, what else? What else? So um, uh, that's with uh, Charlton. And we also with that, we have uh, Trapped, which is in post. That was my third film with him. And then we have two other films okay. after that, The Outriders, uh, 1880s Western. He wrote for me. And also Hard Money, another 1880s Western. Uh, the other project that I'm filming, I have a cameo role in, is uh, titled Jack of Hearts. And that's by Tim Kelly. And he wrote me a cameo role in that. That's my third film with him. And mm. he has two other films that he's uh, finishing up. Uh, Love Lives. Love Psychological Lives. thriller. And then we have uh, Here Comes the Night, which is uh, a short that uh, he wrote for me. Offered me the starring role. He is going to take it as a full feature and shoot it in New York. Actually, both those films. Oh, well, the, the short, if I may interject... Uh, the, the the shorts that you do, Michael, are they uh, the, of the twelve fifteen? Or are they more like the half hour shorts? Because these days filmmakers they'll they'll say it's a short, and uh, you know by the Academy of Standards it's usually they want it about a half hour forty five minutes. Um, what are the shorts that you that you do are are primar- primarily what they about quarter of an hour 15 uh, minutes some 12, 12, 12 they'll vary in length the one that we're working on the hiker is 11 pages but it has a lot of visuals and a lot of camera oh yeah that can in run there as well action. yeah okay um trapped uh, that was 20 some pages i believe 29 um they vary in length okay and i, I don't uh-huh. recall all the yeah i was just curious the length on these times uh, but they're uh but it's good that you're doing all this I yeah mean, they're you know it's it's very nice uh we have also, I'm working with um, Javier Barbera right now, and uh, we've got a film coming up here, and it's called Feed the Beast. Feed, I, I love and that it's a short, and it's uh, co-written with uh, Javier Barbera and with Rafael Buñuel, mm-hmm. the son of a legendary filmmaker, writer-director, Luis Buñuel. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, a nice little piece that it, they uh, wrote and uh, offered to me. Well, you you got to let us know on Facebook or, or somehow on your, uh, well, on you your can, site that when these films come out. So I do aware. announce those on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Um, 
internet movie database as well but also on my official website you can see some of the sizzle trailers that I've worked with on uh, with Javier and that we film um, a scene to give a taste of look and feel of what the feature film will be like uh, mm -hmm. we have the cage the cave the monolith now on 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 YouTube, uh, th these are on YouTube, I assume. Some of them are on YouTube uh, channel. I have a YouTube channel, but you can also view them officially on my official website at michaelwaynejames.com. Go to clips and go to selected uh, acting scenes. Okay. I've got three different categories: feature films, television, and. Uh, yeah, cause you're mentioning Sizzler a lot. These Sizzler trailers. I want to know: is there a site called Sizzler? I mean, or just no, that was a place you go get a steak for like <laughs> three bucks. Uh, we Fries are extra. Uh, that's how things are going in no, Long Beach. We had a sizzler. They tore that down. The, the sizzle trailer is used to pitch the, yeah. uh, the feature film concept uh, to uh, for co-production deals, for alignment, and for equity partners. So what we've done is actually created a visual which says a lot more than a, a one sheet or a synopsis. Yeah. Uh, the others are Night 11, Night, that's Night 11, mm -hmm. One Night 11. It has a little spin. We threw some alien um, subject in there. Uh, the Forest and the Car. We keep them busy short. Busy man. You're a busy man. Now, uh, the, uh, back, to, back to uh, uh, Tradewind International Pictures. Yes. Now, are you, are you part of that or you're just... Produ you, you produce for them now and again? or I am partners with Banning Kent Larry. We're partners under Tradewinds International okay, Banners. Okay, so you are part of them, okay. Banning is way. the, yes, that's correct. He's the, we have original okay. screenplays. We have uh, Texas Tough, a contemporary western about a country western singer that goes to jail for murder and finds redemption in a voice in the radio. <laughs> well, I, nice I, I didn't hear about that audition. Who got, that, who got that part? I actually tried to get hold of Brad Paisley, but um, <laughs> the um, uh, agents no. wouldn't talk to me at this point. They said, when you have a director in cash, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. Um, this this company now, are they based here or are they uh, somewhere else? We're based uh, in Austin, Texas. Austin? Yes. Yeah, that's where Robert Rodriguez has his uh, production company. Uh, yes, Robert he, Rodriguez he, does. He, I've got he's some out uh, there. emails mm -hmm. sent to me by some of the people working with him poolside at a barbecue. <laughs> Where, where, where did you learn how to ride? Do horseback riding well, out here? In I learned uh, back at Living Handsome Old? Dam. Um, I Handsome had Dam. some um, some friends of mine had horses, and we'd go uh, ride around Handsome Dam. That's when I first had my experience riding horses. Where, where's Handsome Dam? Sort of by uh, San, above San, San Fernando Valley there. There's... Uh, you, See, I told you, I'm, I'm You're not from this area. Not okay. from this area. That's uh, the, it, it, it goes from. Uh, it's a small Hollywood little dam to the border, yeah, but it's a there's a dam. There's a dam. It's just you at the I, bottom I of Big Tahunga Canyon. Actually, that's where I did my first first film. <laughs> western. It was. It actually was a western. There was three guys. Uh, so you, uh, so uh, Fred Stern, uh, Jeff. I'm trying <laughs> to remember the guy's name. Guys. Talking valley long people. time ago. <laughs> All our guests live in the valley. I swear, uh, man. Uh, valley. Well, that's good. Now, uh, uh, why do you think... Uh, I don't see too many Westerns aside from Hateful Eight that just came out. And that, that, that is, I guess, a Western. Why, why are we... Uh, you've got your ear to the, to the ground. What, uh, what's going on? How come we don't see that many Westerns today? There's no interest or what? I believe it's secular. And they come around over a period of time, and somebody decides mm. that they're going to tell a story, and they get enough people behind it, mm -hmm. and with the distributors and with the uh, financing, they say, you know, we're, we've got a great story, we want to tell it. And um, the uh, Outriders and Hard Money are 1880s westerns with uh, Charlton Thorpe, and Texas yeah. Stuff is a contemporary western. So we've got... Uh, we got uh, prison uh, bull riding in there. We got country western music. Beautiful, beautiful story. Very touching. Actually, I yeah, dropped. Yeah, uh, you know, I'd like to see some. I'm, I'm a film guy. I, I got to see horses and cowboys every now and then. Or horses and cowboys. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the Revenant was was fine. That was all right. You know, I enjoyed the riding. Revenant very, very much. Yeah. And I'm surprised it didn't get it, Hollywood. Uh, but uh, you know, it goes back to 1870s. You know, but we keep a mixed bags. Uh, 
but uh, I was curious about that. Your and, and, the, and the westerns. There are a few that are coming out, and I keep my eyes open for it. Um, the market tends to buy a certain genre of film occasionally, uh, and um, but in regards to that, we also have a mixed bag because we also have Tarantula. It's a supernatural thriller about a burnout DEA agent going down to South America. Well, I thought it was going to be a horror film about a giant tarantula. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Talk about circular. They just, <laughs> this is just bite your head off one, <laughs> one clip of those big claws they All have. Right, I'll watch it. I'll go. So, um, I'll but you can actually, that. the uh, tarantula can actually picked up on Amazon. We've uh, banning put it together as a screenplay and then wrote a fictional novel and it can be purchased as a uh, collector's item on Amazon. There you go. Tarantula. That, Tarantula. That, that it's it's like a nice piece here. We also have Super Cool Magic, and that's a family film. And oh, we have uh, right. Jennifer uh, Stone attached. She plays Harper on uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. Nice little under $2 million budget. Man, this guy's all over. Any no. web series? Are you guys, do you guys have any web series? Because everybody's doing web series. Uh, have not a done web a web series, series at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we also got big guys about uh, some uh, gentlemen chasing... Uh, a diamond around a small town. A diamond? Big diamond. It comes from okay. an a, a island off the coast somewhere, and there's a... All right. They're trying to save the island because... Uh, you wrote all that down while I was getting ready for the show? Look well, at if, all I had my, stuff. if I had my laptop here, I'd actually just bring it up on my uh Well, they my, said I think page. they have uh, uh, Wi-Fi in here. You could have gone for it. I don't know if it would have worked. I mean, the, the <laughs> look at our computer, man. <laughs> as long as it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. We're about ready to wind up. Oh, Mike. But Michael, also, um, uh, li- let me get to this. Uh, how how can people contact you? What are your contacts? That uh, uh, my contact in? is uh, Michael Wayne James. Mm-hmm. Dot com. Okay. They can also go to Trade Winds mm-hmm. International Pictures. Dot com to have a look at our original screenplays. And there'll be links uh, on my official website that'll take you to some of the other. And you're also on Facebook, right? I'm on Facebook, yeah. uh, Internet Movie Definitely. Database Pro. Well, that's that's my sign up on that one. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a lot to look at there. There's uh, we have a lot in development. Um, I'm very fortunate to have. Uh, You've got a lot going, man. I'm group of uh, handful of writer directors that uh, I'm on my third, fourth, fifth, seventh project together. We're independent, and that's the market I've been in. Uh, been representing myself for a period of time. Endeavor, pursue, and wake up with the belief that we're going to have a great day. There you go. Think positive. Michael Wayne James, I thank you for coming on, my friend. New friend. And i got to say, that there is a lot going on with this man. And uh, there, there are the contacts and uh, I've seen his reels. If you want to contact him for any project, there you are. I think he's a fine actor. Thank you for coming in. Go well, ahead. Thank you, Blessing. Pocho, and I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm currently seeking representation, so if any of the top ten agents out there would like to have some <laughs> new, we do fresh some face, out there. I'll deliver. Man, Michael Wayne James. Yeah, and he's a good-looking, mature actor. Yeah. He can do leads. Don't worry about it. I'm a lot okay. older than I look. That's I right. keep it you, healthy. You, and he looks fit as well. Okay, next week, the return of Beto El Marchesi. He'll be back uh, with us for the hour. So with that, we're going to leave you with a little bit more. Veronica, sad to say no commercials. <laughs> That's not my problem. Okay, so we will be back next week. Have a pleasant weekend. And... Uh, any last uh, comments you want to make, Michael? I'll leave you with the last word. Anybody looking for a uh, new series, The Boulevard, written by Gregory Fritkin, based by the uh, radio broadcast Broadway by yeah. David Fritkin. Broadway's my beat, and uh, we've adapted it to a contemporary, not contemporary, but it's a 1940s crime drama, The Boulevard. We're looking to get it picked up as a series. All right. Thank you for being here, and uh, as soon as Veronica comes on, we can we can get on out of here. Don't tell me we're having trouble with this, Leo. Ah, no, we're not. Push the other button. <laughs> Push the other button. Now, this is the only one we got for this one. All right. Hasta la próxima. Gracias, Dios. 
Igualmente. Gracias. Se llamaba Sol. Teníamos una conexión de nuestras almas enamorado. Me llamaba Libélula. Troubles, but your man is tight. He's a vampire. You're a girl. You don't exactly belong in the same two worlds, but he. Are you ready? Webradio.com, your internet radio destination for the new millennium. Live anytime, on any day, from anywhere. It's webradio.com.